All right, so for part three, operations on complex numbers, it has one objective. And your objective is to perform operations on complex numbers. So addition, subtraction, and multiplication is what we're going to be working with. Um, so the goals that you're going to experience are just numbers one and two. That's what you're going to be looking for. So multiplying binomials, know what happens when you multiply the number i with itself, and then adding, subtracting like terms, understand what makes a term alike with another term. And then also understanding what happens when you take the square root of a negative is something you're also going to see in this video. So let's begin. Before we get into the actual examples of how I want you to work out your practice, we have to talk about what a complex number is. And a complex number is a combination of a whole number and an imaginary number. So, some examples. Negative 7 plus 3i. That is a complex number, meaning that is, it is a whole number and an imaginary number. So, you can add and subtract complex numbers in the same way you have combined algebraic expressions with variables. You just keep your real terms and imaginary parts separate. So, again, we're looking for like terms and like parts, and we keep them separate and we write them. Your answer should look something like this when you're all done, a complex number. So let me do example one, and then I'm going to have you try example two on your own. So for example one, the first thing I would do if I was looking at this would be to identify like terms. Or parts. So if I were to look at this, I see that negative 2 is a whole number, and over here, negative, or I'm sorry, positive 1 is also a whole number. So then I read it left to right like a book, and I'm going to show my steps out because I'm going to keep them separate. All right? So I have negative 2, and since this is plus, I write plus the positive 1. And that equals negative 2 plus 1 equals a negative 1. So I know my final answer is going to have negative 1 as my whole part of the complex number, the whole number part. Moving on then, I'll do it in a different color. I notice that there is a 5i, and its like part is this negative 7i. So I read it like a book again. I have positive 5i plus, since this... Since this is plus, I write plus, and then I have to take this subtraction sign with it. So I have plus a negative 7i. Because it was subtraction of 7 or subtracting 7, it becomes a plus of a negative 7i. This equals then a positive 5 and a negative 7. I just do the math with this, the 5 and the negative 7 equals a negative 2i. So I have kept them separate like I was supposed to, and my final answer is going to look something like this example. So I have a negative 1 minus, because it's just a negative 2i, I write minus 2i. That is my final answer. So go ahead and try example 2 at the end of this video right here. I'm going to have you try a couple of these on your own just to test your understanding. So, let's move on to another example you might see. I'm going to do example one right here. In this case, the first thing I should notice is that I don't see any uh, imaginary parts of a complex number. All I see are the square roots of a negative. But hopefully that jumps out in your mind as it would in mine that the square root of negative is going to lead me to an imaginary number because I can't take the square root of a negative. So the first step in this is to simplify the radicals. So I'm going to write that. And then after that, the second step would be to do the first step up here, identify like terms slash parts. So to simplify the radicals, I have two radicals. The square root of negative 9 equals 
i. Because the square root of 9 is 3, but the square root of negative 9, I need to include that i. So then I have also the square root of negative 49 equals 7 i. So I have broken down both of my radicals into its simplest form with the imaginary number. So now I'm going to rewrite everything with the imaginary component. So I have a negative 2 plus, I'm sorry, not plus, negative 2, it's a minus here, so it is minus 3i, and then plus, I'm just going to rewrite it as is, plus a negative 3, minus again because of that, minus 7i. Now it becomes the same thing we did above in example 1. I just look for like parts. So this is the next step I'm going to do is look for like parts. I see a whole number negative 2 and I see a whole number negative 3. So I'm going to write negative 2 plus, because it's plus, plus negative 3. And in this case that equals negative 5. So I'm done with the whole numbers. Now let's move on to the imaginary parts. Negative 3i plus a negative 7i. So I have a negative 3i plus a negative 7i. And that equals negative 3 plus a negative 7 equals a negative 10i. So my final answer, I have to write negative 5 minus because it was a negative 5 and a negative 10 minus 10i, and I'm done. Go ahead and try example 2 on your own as well at the end of this video, and please raise your hand as you're done working with these examples so I can come check your work. It's important to note, I didn't mention this at the beginning, standard form of a complex number is written like how I'm writing these answer choices right here. The whole number comes first, and then the imaginary part. So let's go ahead and put that really quick. Standard form needs to look something like the whole number, negative 3 plus the imaginary part, 2i. So whole number first, imaginary part second. All right, and finally, let's work through multiplying complex numbers. So when you multiply complex numbers, use the distribution method that you are already familiar with. Then combine like parts. However, you must simplify it further by replacing i squared with, remember, negative 1. I'm going to write that here. i squared, you've learned from a previous video, equals negative 1. So we're going to get in the habit of whenever I see an i squared, I'm going to change it to negative 1 to do that math. So, the same thing, I do first term times first term, first term times second term. So 2 times 9, again if I was going to do this example, I would notice that it's multiplication because these two binomials are bumping into each other, there's no operation in the middle of here. And then the distribution method is always first term times first term, first term times second term. So first term times first term first term times second term, and then move on to the second term in that first binomial. So that's, that's the process I went through as I thought about that. So 2 times 9, I will write my answer right below it. Please get in the habit of showing your work just like I'm doing. 2 times 9 is 18. Then I follow my next pathway. 2 times a negative 3i is a negative. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6i. Now, this helps me, so you can do this if you want to. I'm going to cross out my tooth because I'm done with it. I don't have to go back to that term. Now I move on to the second term in my first binomial. Second term times first term, second term times second term. So I have a 4i times a 9. I'm going to just keep writing it below down here. So 4i times 9, 4 times 9 is... 36, and it's a positive 36 because it's a positive 4i times a positive 9. So plus 36, but I need my i because that 4i. And then finally, my second term, this is when this part is going to come into play, so please make note of that. I have a 4i times a negative 3i. I'm gonna, I can show this math. 4i times a negative 3i 
equals 4 times a negative 3 is negative 12, and then i times i is i squared. So I'm going to put minus 12i squared. At this point, please, please, please automatically get in the habit. I see an i squared. So instead of i squared, I'm going to write negative 1. So I'm going to cross out that i squared and put in parentheses negative 1 to help me understand that math. Now we need to simplify. So simplifying means combining like terms and then simplifying this piece right here. So the like terms I can combine. First off, I'm not touching the 18 yet. 18 doesn't have a like term. There's no other whole number at this point. So I'm just going to bring it down. 18. But this term, negative 6i, and this term, positive 36i, are in common because they both have an i. So positive 36 minus 6, or negative 6 plus 36, is a positive 30i. And then finally, this piece right here I need to simplify. I have a negative 12, and now I have a multiplication of negative 1. Remember, I crossed out that i squared and turned it into negative 1 because of this rule up here. So, negative 12 times negative 1 becomes a positive 12. And I write my answer right there. So, as you're following along, hopefully your work looks exactly like this. And then the final step is now I do have whole number like terms. I have a whole number 18 here and a whole number 12 that came from this piece up here. 18 plus 12, remember it's a positive 18, and then this plus means plus 12. If it was a minus 12, then I'd minus it. But 18 plus 12 is 30. So 30 for my whole number, and then plus 30i for my complex parts. And I am done. So, go ahead and try example two uh, in this part over here. And please raise your hand when you are done so I can come check your work.